I want people to see the imagery or be enchanted with either the color, the texture, or the pattern of my work and be drawn to it. And once they're engaged, I hope then they notice that my work is made with a lot of trash. My name is Michelle Stitzlein. I like being an artist because I like to um, make my own rules and break my own rules. I work with repurposed materials, things that uh, might be 50 years old or might be five minutes old, but most typically are household items. Some of these materials, people think there is no second use for them. All that outdated technology um, the, typically goes into a landfill and cannot be recycled. Garden hoses, electrical wire, coaxial cable, piano parts, car parts, um, bicycle parts, uh, things that you would use in your kitchen, pots and pans. I like to use things that are not considered antiques because somebody else can use those. I like to use things that don't necessarily have um, uh, value things that are rusty uh, people don't want to use those in their kitchen um, things that have chipping paint uh, all types of things that I believe could have potential in artwork either because of their color uh, their texture or their pattern so I do a lot of dismantling of items especially when it comes to a piano because I want all of those wonderful parts that are the inside or I want uh, the keys, uh, the bicycles, maybe I just want the handlebars or the gears. I enjoy working with these materials. Uh, they have a patina, they have a rust, and they have a history of the people that utilized them prior to me. And I like the concept of all these mix and matched things coming together for a unique piece. I hope then they notice that this artwork is made with hundreds, if not thousands, of items that they use on a daily basis. Perhaps they'll realize that, oh, I used one of those today and it went into the trash today, and maybe something will dawn that we're going through a lot of goods that perhaps should not happen. And uh, on a daily basis, I think we can all in our work lives and our personal lives, think about those material goods uh, and consumer items that we're using. You don't have to be an artist to think twice about how you can repurpose a good or um, simply not buy it, <laughs> reuse another item. So I hope that that is something that uh, is a realization from my work. I am from Baltimore, Ohio, uh, which is located just outside of Columbus, Southeast. Uh, it's a rural, rural community and I live in a former Grange Hall that has been adapted to our living and workspace. My husband is also an artist. It is a large structure from the 1950s, but uh, the upper floor is all dedicated to studio space where um, I work with my materials. A lot of the time they're actually very difficult for me to access because people don't think of recycling their garden hose, they throw it out. So a lot of my materials literally come from the trash can. I'll be driving down the road, I have friends and family that know what I do, that will see them hanging out of a trash can and you'll go down the road, do a U-turn, come back, pull in the driveway, pull the garden hose out for Michelle, which is great. So that's the type of material that I'm utilizing. Everything but the kitchen sink, I like to say. Uh, it's too heavy. <laughs> By nature, I'm a very thrifty person. And uh, even as a child, my mother was an artist. And she worked with oils and watercolors. She would buy me a pad of paper, you know, this beautiful pad of paper. And I was intimidated by this blank sheet of beautiful, white, thick, expensive paper. I never got over that intimidation. So the idea of buying new materials to me uh, and having the fear of not making a beautiful piece on this beautiful paper 
has always been an issue. Accessing recycled and repurposed materials, uh, I feel like there, if I mess up, if I make a mistake, it was gonna go into the landfill anyway, and there's more where that came from. Uh, in a positive and a negative way, um, there is always more trash. So for me, uh, I always have access to materials, but um, environmentally, uh, not so good. I think Shenandoah is a beautiful park. I love national parks. I think it's important to retain the environment and the habitat for all of the wildlife that we probably do not have in our own backyards. And to come to an environment like Shenandoah as an artist and see the variety of insects and animals and plants, uh, it's very inspiring and it feeds my creativity, especially when it's new. And as an artist, I like to see new things. Uh, I travel and uh, to come to a park that has all that variety of newness is extremely exciting. <laughs> it's amazing how many stories could be told probably within 24 hours of a national park. I am uh, a person that enjoys uh, insects and moths specifically. In the past, I've done a series of uh, lichen series and moths. Uh, I like butterflies too, but I'm a night person. <laughs> I like to identify uh, moths. It's very scientific too, and I think we share that with scientists, artists do. Uh, the observation being very important and as a visual exercise to, to look at the details of a moth specifically, repeatedly, to find those details, I think is, is critical. And I go out at night here at approximately 9, 9.30, and there will be anywhere from 10 to 20 moths on my front door or at the lamppost and I have a standing appointment with a toad. I met him or her three or four times and he's trying to eat them and I'm trying to identify them. So it's kind of a race to get to the moths first. But I have located and identified, I think a close to uh, 15 moths, four or five of which are completely new to me. And I would say three, which were absolutely stunning. And uh, one of those was a lichen moth, a beautiful bright red with gray combination with yellow edges in a completely green environment such as this. It's startling and striking uh, to see this beautiful, where did it get that color? Especially when it's feeding on lichen, which is a bright green. Uh, where did that color come from? And wow. <laughs> uh, that is just just that one moth alone and i've seen so many different things that inspire me uh visually but uh the, the lichen moth has been pretty incredible Hi, I'm Jessica Cochalone, and I am the Executive Director of the Shenandoah National Park Trust, and we are proud to be the philanthropic partner of the Shenandoah National Park. Our mission is to invest philanthropic dollars in initiatives and programs that ensure Shenandoah remains the crown jewel of the national park system, an economic driver for the region, and a national treasure for all to enjoy today and tomorrow. If you are interested in learning more about Shenandoah National Park Trust and supporting this program, please visit us online at snptrust.org.